everybody. I'm Carol Marks, and this is where I host my remarks on glamour, pop culture, and front page news. This podcast is a member of Give Me Liberty Media. Now, let's get right to it. This is really way too long. All right, here we go. We're going to start right off with a glam article because it's glam, pop culture, and front page news. I don't, I know I don't necessarily have to go in order like that. But this is what we're going to do. We're going to start off with a glam. So this lady, you're aging yourself with with an eyeliner mistake, says pro makeup artist. And fake add-ons should be avoided at all costs. So I knew already, I knew already what she was going to talk about when she talked about the eyeliner aging yourself. Do not put eyeliner on your bottom lid. I haven't done that in probably since I was in high school, the Navy uh, maybe my early thirties. I don't know, but I don't know. I have small eyes anyway, and I know putting eyeliner on the bottom makes my eyes look really small. So I don't do it. Haven't done it in years. I might every once in a while put a white or a neutral color on the bottom to help maybe uh, make it pop a little, make it open up a little bit more. I think if you put a for me, anyway, I can only speak for me because I only have my eyes. My eyes are, like I said, are really small. And I put white or neutral eyeliner on the bottom. I haven't done it in a long time. Uh, on the bottom line to help make my eye look a little bigger. But she's talking about also not putting false eyelashes on because it will make you look older. Uh, well, if you don't have any eyelashes, sweetheart, I'm wearing the false eyelashes now. Can I trim them down a little bit? Yes, I have done so recently. Uh, I love my it, the eyelashes that I use, and I always get compliments on them. They're the Kiss brand, and the style name is Teddy. I'm sure you've heard me say this over and over and over again before. <clears throat> However, the last couple of days, I've actually tried to trim them down a little bit so they're not out there a lot. All right, we're moving on. We're moving on. I didn't even read the article to you. How was that? Uh, you can go read it. It's on my X file. Uh, all right, let's see what else. Here's another podcast topic. New York City landlord and Harvard fellow defends pummeling armed vagrant who charged him with deadly weapon scared for my life. All right, first of all, I'm kind of impressed that this brainiac Harvard fellow can scrap and fight and defend himself. This is a long-ass article, though, y'all. It goes into some pretty good detail. And I'm not going to read it all to you because it is out there on the X-File. And, you know, this is in New York City. This is what people are experiencing. But apparently, he's getting some sh- crap for doing this. And, um, look, if somebody was coming at me with a weapon, of course, I'm a chick. I'm smaller if I saw a guy coming, I would probably run. I don't think I'd try to stay in a fight. Uh, or, you know, if I had something else with me, if you know what I'm talking about. Okay, a Chinatown landlord and Harvard fellow told the Post on Tuesday he was defending himself when he pummeled an armed homeless man and provided chilling new video of the encounter. They have screenshots of it on the, in this article. And yes, the guy was definitely coming at him. I just wanted to get home to my wife and kids. Brian Chen, 32, said he remembered thinking as the madman began wildly swinging a nail-studded piece of wood at him. Chen, a graduate psychology student and teaching fellow in the Ivy League School's Division of Continuing Education, said the terrifying showdown began after he spotted the vagrant on the ground outside the subway station at Christie and Grand Streets in Manhattan around 8.30 p.m. Saturday. Manhattan, y'all. The married dad who locals told the Post is a makeshift activist dedicated to cleaning up the junkie strewn area, said he put on black rubber gloves as he approached the man, as he always does when he checks on the homeless. So this guy was not just, he was out there checking on the home. Oh my goodness. I don't bend over because we see so much here, people in the park, that use K2, I don't know what that is, and the moment that you wake them up or anything, the situation can turn violent, 
said Chin, who publicly decried crime in the neighborhood after a vagrant murdered one of his tenants in 2022. Okay, so, all right, I get what he's doing. I don't think I would be doing it, but I understand why he would do it. Okay, so I guess K2 is a drug. Uh, so he doesn't bend over. He stands straight up. I don't know. Uh, that I don't think that's relevant to what I want to talk about. Um, so he's a, also a landlord. So he's checking, I guess, to make sure people don't hang out around his apartment complex for his tenants. Chin said he asked the guy if he was okay. I recognized him because he was a panhandler that has been frequently hanging uh, out at Grand Street. He has never been violent to me, the landlord said. I asked him, are you okay, man? Do I have to call the cops? Do I have to call the ambulance? Nothing, Chen said. The landlord then appeared to kick the man, video shows. Okay, so this is getting a little bit more detailed. Chen, I guess maybe he was, you know, kicking him to make sure he was alive or something. Chen said he tapped the man on the left, on the butt, to see if he had OD'd and needed medical attention. Well, okay, yeah, I guess so, because, look, these people are laying out all over the streets. I watch video after video on YouTube, and they're just, I mean, laid flat ass out on the streets, on the sidewalks of New York City. It's like the streets of Philadelphia, only these people are actually laying on the ground like they're dead. Mm-mm-mm. Uh, we have so, uh, you can, uh, you know what, you can go finish reading that. It's a long story, but apparently he's getting some flack over doing this, and he beat the crap out of him, because I guess the man got up and came after him and started swinging this weapon at him, and then he decided, then Chin uh, was just trying to defend himself. But, my question is, should he have been out there provoked? I don't want to say provoking. I don't know that he was out there provoking even. He was out there, if he's a landlord, and he has these homeless people hanging out in front of his apartment complex. Maybe the residents say, hey, look, we don't want this. Can you get rid of him? And that's what he was doing. I don't know. I don't know. All right. Next up in the pulp culture, this is disgusting. So I hope you've eaten your breakfast already. Uh, what, do, well, or maybe not. I don't know. Gwyneth Paltrow has, be, has banned overnight house guests after poop gate. Okay, I, my first question is, why are grown-ups having sleepovers? Hmm? I mean, I know, why would you have guests stay at your house? Well, you know, if, you, if they're not family, why are they staying with you? But, you know, these are celebrities, so I don't know. Gwyneth, Gwyneth Paltrow has put an end to overnight guests after the notorious poop gate left her traumatized. From This is from Radar online.com can reveal that Paltrow, who is 51, why do they have to put their ages on there? Banned overnight house guests after the horrifying incident unfolded earlier this summer at her Hamptons. Okay, so she has this guy stay over for some reason. His and the, his name is Derek Blasberg. He's a socialite and they describe him as a socialite and celebrity hanger on described as one of showbiz's most well-connected men. He uh, did a bunch of stuff on YouTube, I think. Uh, I'm trying to... Gwyneth told... <laughs> so, Blasberg, he's 42 years old, apparently blamed the crappy incident on popular weight loss drug Ozempic before fleeing Paltrow's previously pristine property. So, he stayed over at her house, crapped all over her bed while he was in bed, and then just left it. <sighs> what in the world... Who does this? I guess this guy Derek does, and blame it on Ozempic. Look, you can't get up and go to the bathroom? Mm-mm. But an insider said it's not Ozempic. That's just what he told everyone. G Gwyneth told Oprah, Jerry, and Jessica Seinfeld, and Larry David. The source, in other words, probably don't have this guy stay at your house. He'll shoot all over your, your sheets. Okay. The uh, source added, it's shocking how many people know this story and how he has managed to keep it out of the post, probably via the, his best friend, socialite somebody, somebody, whose mom just married Rupert Murdoch. <sighs> Paltrow and Blasberg have been friends for years, and the socialite who had the fashion and beauty partnership, okay, here we go, who led the fashion and beauty partnership division at YouTube until 2022 was 
and was in attendance when the Marvel actress married hubby Brad. Okay. <clears throat> so, uh, yeah, don't have guests. Okay. All right. That was quite disgusting. We are going to move on to another topic. Let's see. Oh, you know what? I was watching news radio yesterday, and I put a little screenshot of the scene where one of the characters, Lisa, has a dog, and she's calling it Daisy, and Beth and this other guy is trying to tell her, no, it's a boy, and they're talking about sex and gender, and Lisa says, or one of the guys says, well, sex and, you know, we're talking about gender, not sex, and Lisa says, well, sex and gender are the same thing. I look, even sitcoms back in the day knew the truth. All right, this next story, oh my gosh, I, woo, this is, this is horrible, and it's from the USA Today. Husband admits adding cocaine, MDMA, I don't know what that is, to wife's cokes and hopes he would marry her daughter, y'all, y'all, and yes, the daughter was in on it, y'all. Can you imagine this lady now, her husband and her daughter, oh my gosh, trying to kill her. Can you imagine, you have to live with that now. My goodness. All right, and this guy is 71 years old. What the hell? What the hell? Alfred Roof, 71, was sentenced to four years in prison after confessing to poisoning his wife by spiking her Coca-Cola drinks with cocaine and, and other drugs. An Indiana man admitted to putting poisonous off-white powdery substance into his wife's Coca-Cola so he could kill her and marry her daughter, according to state court records. This guy, Alfred, 71, pleaded guilty. Okay, blah, blah, blah. Roof told officers in January 22 uh, that he had been spiking his wife's drinks over the last few months with a substance given to him by his wife's daughter, according to a pro probable cause affidavit obtained by USA Today, Roof's wife, who called the Wayne County Sheriff's Department and told them about her husband's actions, gave the responding deputy a pill bottle that contained the unknown powdery substance, the affidavit says. She also gave the deputy a Coca-Cola aluminum can that she drank and cut open at... The bottom of the can was the off-white residue. The document continued. Another deputy took Roof's wife to a hospital where she was tested positive to have an MDMA, cocaine, and benzodiazepines in her blood and urine. According to affidavit, she denied using the drugs. All right, so he's been spiking her thing, spiking her drinks. Uh, the daughter and her female friend would call and tell Roof to give the drugs to his wife. He told, oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Mm -mm -mm. Oh dear. Oh dear. Okay. Oh my gosh. Okay. I know I'm just cutting in the middle of this, cutting all over the place. Alfred would then sprinkle the dog. Okay. Hold on. Let me back up. The daughter and her female friend would call to tell Ruth to give the drugs to his wife. Alfred would then sprinkle some of the white powder in his wife's Coke and then wait for her to fall asleep. The women would then come to Alfred's re residence and put more of an unknown substance in Ruth's wife's drink and have her drink it. Once Ruth's wife was asleep, her daughter and her daughter's friend would put on a show for Roof, according to the affidavit. The show involved the two women putting on Roof's wife's... What? No, negligees, and then performing... Oh, my God. Oh, dear. Okay, I hope your kids are not around. <laughs> the show involved the two women putting on Roof's wife's negligees and then performing sex acts on each other. The court document continues. Oh my gosh. You oh my gosh. Oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm so sorry, y'all. This is not funny. Roof also told authorities that while he was have oh uh Roof also told authorities that while he was having sex with his wife's daughter or her friend, one of the women would steal some of his wife's personal items. He also admitted to paying the women to perform sex. Oh, dear. 
If you would like to go finish reading that, you know where it is. Oh my gosh. I didn't know it was all like that. Ooh, I didn't know the article was going to be in such detail. Mm -mm -mm. I mean, I'm assuming, I'm assuming, please, that the man, the husband, is the stepfather. I mean, he's 71. There's grown, I hope it's not his biological daughter this is happening with, in other words. Goodness. I mean, I wish it wasn't happening at all. And this poor woman is left to deal with this. Her husband and her daughter trying to kill her. Oh, my gosh. Mm -mm. I can't imagine. All right, we need to move on. And I need a question. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry that I didn't know the detail. I didn't know that article was that detailed. Okay, I need to I need to pre-read these before I put them on the air, before I talk about them. All right, here we go. Question of the day. Okay, as a kid, did you believe any of the characters like Santa Claus, the Easter Bunny, things like that? And if you did believe in it, when did you, how did you find out these were not true? That's my question of the day. Okay, gotta go and uh, have a great day and I will be back again tomorrow. Thanks for listening. What's that? Who pays your salary? What's that? We're not a democracy!